This is session 24 of the Law of One, part one. In this part, we're going to talk about Yahweh and the Orion group again as we get near our current day, 3,000 years ago. Let's start. So in the past sessions, we've been going through the whole master cycle of 75,000 years, and now we're getting near the end. In fact, at the end of this session, we're going to get almost to current era, which uh, I'll leave for part two. It's a little surprise there that I want to talk about because it's how the session ends. And in this session, we have covered a lot about the uh, Yahweh group and the Orion group. So if you haven't watched anything about Yahweh yet, go to session 16 and 18, I believe, is where we talk about Yahweh. And there's some clarification that needs to be uh, understood before we kind of know what is Yahweh. Yahweh, the biblical God and all that stuff. So then we're going to talk about certain things that we have talked about before, but that's where the line of question led. And we're going to cover that, of course, as part of the session. What I'm not going to cover is a couple of things that are specific about this session. And the first one is I'll read it uh, directly to you because it's part of uh, what it is. And then the other part is that Carla um, was a little congested. And because of that, Don wanted to make sure that while she was in a trance, she would cough so her throat was clear because she was not there. So there's a lot of that happening in this session. And that's why you'll see the questions jump uh, from 0.4 to 0.6 or something like that. Every other question, sometimes it'll take more time. Every so often, Don would ask Ra to clear her throat by coughing and they did just that. So that's why I took that. If you want to see the actual transcript of everything, go as usual to the lawofone.info, which is where you can find everything really organized in every session, session 24, check it out. All right, now to talk about the session itself, Don first talks to Ra about uh, Carla's condition, which uh, we already covered, and then he goes into his plan. And that's what I'm going to read to you directly. And then we'll go into the first question. So Don said, thank you. The way I intend to continue with the book is to follow on through the last 25,000 year cycle that we are in now and possibly investigate a little bit of four density conditions and thereby find many places that we can go back to delve further into the law of one. The first material, I expect not to be too deep with respect to the law of one. I hope to get into greater philosophical areas of the law of one in more advanced sessions so as to make the material progress so to so that it will be understandable. I hope that I'm following the right direction in this. So this is what Don uh, expressed before reading the first question or asking the first question as I'm going to do right now. And he's talking here about the direction of the law of one and the book. So. Uh, they already covered the last 25,000 year cycle, and now he wants to get more into the deeper philosophical meaning of the law of one, but it's not going to be in this session, but in further ones. So we're finalizing that little project that he had to cover the history of humanity in that first, second, and third cycle of the big master cycle of third density. So with that, now we have an idea of where we're going to in terms of the book and the series itself and we can go three minutes 33 seconds in from when i started recording this video let's go to the first question don says in the last session you mentioned that during this last 25,000 year cycle the atlanteans egyptians and those in south america were contacted and then the confederation departed i understand the confederation did not come back for some time could you tell me of the reasons and consequences and attitudes with respect to the next contact with those here on planet Earth? To which Ra says, In the case of the Atlanteans, enlargements upon the information given resulted in those activities distorted towards bellicosity, which resulted in the final second Atlantean catastrophe 10,821 of your years in the past, as you measure time. 
many, many were displaced due to societal actions both upon Atlantis and upon those areas of what you would call North African deserts, to which some Atlanteans had gone after the first conflict. Earth changes continued due to these, what you would call, nuclear bombs and other crystal weapons, sinking the last great landmasses, approximately 9,600 of your years ago. Before continuing on this uh, answer of Ra, when they're talking about what happened in Atlantis is that they had apparently two catastrophes and the second one was as they continued to bomb and destroy their land masses in their wars. If we can derive from anything here, let me go back just to make a quick math, that's 400 years plus another 800, that was over a millennia of war in Atlantis going on and how they affected and they they kind of migrated because of these actions themselves so uh, this is pretty self-explanatory I don't think I can I can go further into this other than uh, just make note that around 10,000 years ago these uh, these battles this war that was going on and you can see the level of technology that they had also I'll add that in remembering from the Confederation given all this information to them um, to kind of elicit a, a seeking of the one creator and they just went to war uh, like that planet earth has been really fun so uh, I like what they say crystal weapons thank god we don't have those crystal weapons right now or at least we don't think we have them so um, yeah we, we got close to the nuclear bombs and then the um, interdimensional beings came and say oh, hold on 10,000 years ago, this happened, won't happen again. Let's disarm you monkeys with sticks. So, let's go to the rest of the answer, where Ra says, In the Egyptian and South American experiments, results, though not as widely devastating, were as far from the original intention of the Confederation. It was clear to not only us, but also to the Council, that the Guardians, that our methods were not appropriate for this particular sphere <laughs> I I think this is funny and I'll explain why this is funny not only did they uh, did they give the Atlanteans all this technology to create this devastation on planet Earth but they also did that with the Egyptians and the South American group even though like they say it wasn't as bellicose as, and devastating as it was you know Atlantis they did pervert, as we know already from the past session, uh, that we talk about this, how they um, basically use this for their own gain, power, and so on, or just the distorted religions that came out in South America out of this. So, the reason why I think this is funny is because these interdimensional beings have been trying really hard to do all this stuff, and we humans keep messing it up. Now, the kick up that I get out of this is that think about we we tend to to um, to put down humanity for this we keep saying or at least that's you know the the general reaction that we get is like ah oh, we humans are a mess and we are a mess that's true <laughs> can't deny that but the funny part to me is that none of this is serious like all of this that's happening I mean 75,000 year is a blink of the universe if anything probably nothing nothing not even that so everything that we think is serious here like we need to uh graduate we need to do this i mean this is an experiment and we're all out of this reality it's just an illusion where uh, this is an illusion where we go and uh, marvel on the universe itself and uh, we do have you know plans and things to do and we have a, a certain parameter in which to to work in the universe but uh, the fact that we take sometimes this too serious is uh, its a little amusing to me. Because in the end, we shouldn't take our lives too serious. We shouldn't take ourselves too serious. And that to me is a major thing. Laughter is the realization of connecting all the dots and saying, I get it now. And that's what we all do. But within the cosmic drama of what we call the evolution of the soul, which is something that must happen because that's what the creator made this uh, universe for, then we get into this and we can learn, we can just see everything 
Planet Earth has been a huge experiment. And that's why I think it's funny when they say that not, it wasn't not only for the Confederation, but also the Council, very obvious that their methods were not appropriate to this particular sphere. Planet Earth is fun. So one more reason to be glad to be here and be part of this messy, chaotic world that we live in, especially now. Let's go on. The next part of the answer where Ra keeps explaining what happened was our attitude thus was one of caution, observation, and continuing attempts to creatively discover methods whereby contact from our entities could be of service with the least distortion and, above all, with the last or least possibility of becoming perversions or antithesis of our intentions in sharing information. Sure enough, after all these interventions, what makes sense is that they would try to retreat out of it and give information like the one they gave in 1981. And we're going to get into that at the end of the second part of this session. But that's what they did. Just to go on with the context of the session, they retreated and they went to find better ways in which to uh, convey the information that they wanted to share. So uh, that's the answer. Pretty deep insight in all that was explained. Don now goes to say, then I assume the Confederation stayed away from Earth for a period of time. What condition created the next contact the Confederation made? Ross says, in approximately 3,600 of your years in the past, as you measure time, there was an influx of those of the Orion group, as we call them. Due to the incre increasing negative influences upon thinking and acting distortions, they were able to begin working with those whose impression from olden times, as you may say, was that they were special and different. We're going to get here into the, uh, the changes that happen around 3,000 years, 4,000 years ago, uh, thereabout, where uh, the Orion group was called and they started influencing a lot more. We're gonna cover this in this, uh, in this video and how there was an influence, of course, from Yahweh. This is the time where I would say Yahweh and the Orion group were uh, battling, for lack of a better term, with each other for the information shared or given here to the humans, again, Another fun interaction between negatives and positive that created this mishmash of human perception on spirituality, religion, and so on. So uh, this is what started happening, and that's what they're explaining here. We've covered this again, like I said, in session 16 and 18 about Yahweh's intervention and the Orion group as well. Let's go on. Ra says, an entity of the Confederation, many, many thousand of your years in the past, the one you may call Yahweh, had by genetic cloning set up these particular biases among these peoples who had come gradually to dwell in the vicinity of Egypt, as well as in many, many other places, by dispersion after the down sinking of the land mass Mu. Here the Orion group found fertile soil in which to plant the seeds of negativity. These seeds, as always, being those of the elites, the different, those who manipulate or enslave others. So here comes the Orion group again, trying to uh, plant those seeds of negativity, which is the negative polarity, which seeks the power over others for their own gain, uh, service to self oriented, of course, everything being for themselves, closed in the heart and so on. As we know, they did a great job in doing that because um, they corrupted a lot of people with that philosophy and it created the beauty that we have here on earth and I don't say that lightly I say that with all seriousness which I said you should take everything serious but within this uh, um, this argument of how the universe works in this particular density it's fun to see it that way how they they were able to create this beauty of the earth that we uh, we enjoy so that's what happened. Um, this was all because of a calling that we're going to discuss further in the next part of the answers. And did I miss anything? Uh, remember, yes, um, put into context here, Yahweh. Yahweh was the entity that brought those from Mars 75,000 years ago to create uh, part of the population, 50% of the population back in those days from the Martians um, who were displaced 
because of what they did, of course, in their uh, their planets, and they were brought here. So they were already tied to humanity back then, and they did some genetic modifications, which, again, we're going to cover further here before I get ahead of myself. We'll go to what Ra continues saying. The one known as Yahweh felt a great responsibility to these entities. However, the Orion group had been able to impress upon the peoples the name Yahweh as the one responsible for this elitism. Yahweh then was able to take what you would call stock of its vibratory patterns and became, in effect, a more eloquently effective sound vibrational complex. Okay, so like I said, we've talked about this in, I think it was session 18, where we said how um, the Orion group actually hijacked the Yahweh's name or the idea of the god named Yahweh and they started using it for perversion of the um, of the practices that were being done back then and just distort them enough for people to seek the negative path or the negative polarity. So this is the part where they're saying how the Orion group had been able to impress upon those people that thought about Yahweh as, uh, as the God, well, made him responsible for the elitism that we uh, we see in biblical times where they created all these uh, ideas of power and of respect for God as an external source and so on. So uh, interesting to see that here too. I think this is the last time we'll talk about Yahweh in a while. So Ra continues and finishes the question saying, In this complex, the old Yahweh, now unnamed, but meaning he comes, began to send positively oriented philosophy. This was approximately in your past of two, <clears throat> we correct this instrument, 3,300 years. Thus, the intense portion of what has become known as Armageddon was joined. I'm going to speculate here before reading the next question and finishing up this part that when they say Armageddon, how this started is the conflict between the good and bad, the Yahweh and the Orion group or the good Yahweh or actually, as let me go back to the beginning of this part when they say in this complex, the old Yahweh, now unnamed, because it seems like the, the social memory complex known as Yahweh retreated and they didn't want to have anything to do with Yahweh or that name. I don't know why. Perhaps because of the hijack of the Orion group. Uh, but they maybe that was an, a name that was a, um, attributed to them and they just didn't want to be part of it. I don't know. But they became uh, became more as the unnamed, and we see this in biblical uh, texts where they talk about Yahweh being a name that shouldn't be pronounced because uh, how sacred it is, and so on. So I think it has to do with that, uh, from my little understanding of this whole theology. So um, this, of course created the path for them to contribute in a more positive way and in different ways and that created the um the armageddon that we think is you know this battle between the good and evil or you know the e the devil and god yahweh and satan and so on so i think that's what they mean that's my speculation when i read it this way if you have a different interpretation you guys are really really smart and i love reading what you guys have to say because you enlighten me in different ways so we will continue with the next question which again after Carla <coughs> goes into coughing Don says I have a question about how the Orion group got in 3600 years ago how did they get through the quarantine was that a random window effect Ra says at that, at that time, this was not entirely so, as there was a proper calling for this information. When there is a mixed calling, the window effect is much more put into motion by the ways of the densities. The quarantine in this case was, shall we say, not patrolled so closely, due to the lack of strong polarity. The windows thus needing to be very weak in order to penetration. As your harvest approaches, those forces of what you would call light work according to their call. The ones of Orion have the working only according to their call. This calling is in actuality not nearly as great. Thus, due to the way of empowering or squares, there is much resistance to penetration. Yet, free will must be maintained and those desiring negatively oriented information, as you would call it, must then be satisfied by those moving through 
by the window effects. And let's untangle this if it's not clear enough, uh, because I know it may not seem like that. So the question is how the Orion group went through the quarantine. You have to think about the quarantine as something that prevents or allows influences from external sources as the Confederation or uh, the Orion group trying to bring philosophies or influence to the population here so they can appropriately che uh, choose their, um, their polarity, their path positive or negative. At that time, there was a mixed calling because we were all over the place, like we still are. <laughs> so nothing new there. We were very mixed and the window effect didn't have to be that uh, particular in that case. Those window effects that happen now and then because of the quarantine, things that just are part of the mechanism. So the, the, the window effect is not nearly as important to understand why the Orion group got here in that time, 3,300 years ago or so, whatever the time was. And what happened was that there was no strong polarity. Then because of that, they had to allow uh, the, um, the influence of both positive and negative to come in. And the Orion group, as they say, they are, um, they are negative, so they're the ones who were bringing here the negative philosophy only because there was a calling for it. There was a calling for negative information from people who were very much aware of this type of work, say, or this type of black magic, as they call it, or uh, everything else that is attached to it. So because of that, it's just a simple mechanism by which the Orion group can come and say, okay, well, you call me, here I am, you know, here's your information, good luck and ask us again if you want to. Um, and there's another part they say that, um, this is the last part I think that I read, they say, thus due to the way of empowering our squares, which we have talked about before, I made the correction that there's no law of squares by the raw group. It was actually a mistake, or not a mistake, but, um, well, it's my mistake to think that there was a law of squares in couple of videos ago uh, when I said that Don has said law of squares but it's actually no law of squares there's just the way of empowering or squares whole thing is that um, there is a a formula by which when a certain amount of people call for information then that can be multiplied uh, by squares or square of the last one I did the whole formula in another video but it's pretty simple if there's one person and uh, the calling is one. If there's two, then there's only two. But if there's three, then it's actually double the previous one, which is two, so it's uh, it's four and so on. And you keep adding those. So the next one would be eight. You add eight, four, two, and so on. The fourth, the fifth, the sixth, they're all, I think by uh, person 10, the calling is about a thousand or more than a thousand, roughly. Um, but. That's the way of empowering. Why am I explaining this? Because because of this, there was a lot of resistance from people who were positive, who were calling positive philosophies. That means that there is a lot of resistance in the calling from say, I don't know, imagine there's a pillar of light asking for positive and then a pillar of smoke or darkness. It was very uh, small, yet there was there a calling for negative polarization or negative information. And from the other side, there was a light calling say. Uh, because of that, there was a lot of resistance, but because free will must be maintained, they came here. So, sorry if I made this too long, but I got carried away with law of, law of power, no, law of squares, no, just squares, whatever Rob wants to call it. I think I'm going to keep calling it law of squares, because I like it, <laughs> and I like what Don said. So, all right, let's go on. So Don says, then Yahweh, in an attempt to correct what he saw as what I might call a mistake, I know you don't want to call it that, started 3,300 years ago with the positive philosophy, where both the Orion and Yahweh philosophies impressed telepathically or where their other techniques used. Ra says, there were two other techniques used, one by the entity no longer called Yahweh, who still felt that if it could raise up entities which were superior to the negative forces, that these superior entities could spread the law of one. 
Thus, this entity, Yodesh in Vawe, came among your people in form according to incarnate being and made it in the normal reproductive manner of your physical complexes, thus birthing a generation of much larger beings, these beings called Anak. The other method used to greater effect later in the scenario, as you would call it, was the thought form such as we often use among your peoples to suggest the mysterious or the sublime. You may be familiar with some of these appearances. Let's cover the Anak before we go on to the last question that I have for this video. These we talked about in session 18 for sure, where uh, it explains how they created larger uh, people. These are called the giants in the Bible. This was Yahweh. Yahweh came here and they apparently came here incarnate and did this work, genetic work, to create these giants, which they thought could be more productive, these people being a little bit more uh, powerful and I'm sure they had a different intellect, they could help disseminate the law of one better. Orion group comes on and say, oh, big people who can think themselves different than others and create elites. And that's what they did. <laughs> so this is how the mischievous Orion group did their work, always on top of what the Confederation did. It's almost comical. And again, I'm not making it you know, funny in a way of mocking or everything, but it is funny. Uh, it's a little comical to see how the Confederation always comes, gives information to the humans, and then the Orion group says, oh, we only need to tweak this here and there, and there we go, we did our job. So that's what happened, um, just to bring it back. Those are called Anak. This opens a can of worms that I don't want to really get into, which is the Anunnaki, and there's a lot of information about the Anunnaki, and um, I'm sure there is some... Uh, relatedness here between those and the Anunnaki, Enki and Enlil and all that stuff. Like I said, I'm just showing you the can of worms. It's there if you want to navigate it. Uh, I'm not going to touch it here, but there's a lot of information about that. Anyhow, to keep going uh, with the rest of this video, the last question I have for it is Don saying, could you state some of those after making the instrument cough, please? And so she coughed. And uh, let me make a note here because I talk about the Anak and the Giants and Yahweh and all this stuff. This refers to, uh, let me read it directly from what Ra said. Uh, you may be familiar with these, uh, some of these appearances. These are the thought forms such as they use often here with our people to, with our people to suggest the mysterious or the sublime. So Don is asking about these uh, thought forms that they use. And Ra is going to say, this is information which you may discover. However, we will briefly point the way by indicating the so-called wheel within a wheel and the cherubim with sleepless eye. Okay, so these, uh, this reference that Ra made was about the wheel within the wheel, which is a vision that Ezekiel had in, um, in his days. I have a couple of images, like this one is the classic one that you can find about Ezekiel's vision. And you can see the wheel within the wheel there and the apparition and all that stuff. And then there is this other cool image, which I wanted to include because it shows, uh, I'm not sure what, uh, who the artist of this one is, but it shows the nature of uh, the UFO or the uh, interdimensional being appearance here. So these visions were uh, for Ezekiel and they were impressed by the Confederation in this case to grant this information. So these are the thought forms that they used to kind of give this information. I think of thought forms as something like holographic in nature that the Confederation or the Orion group can make. And we're, we're going to cover some of those in the next part of this session and uh, we can take from here that it is the same interdimensional beings causing to give this information which no matter how we see it whether in dreams or in visions or in apparitions it's always attributed to an external god but there it's just the interdimensional beings and i'll make that note here uh, before i get into the conclusions of this which is really 
and um, the, the foundation of what we think of religion and so on. Um, in fact, um, because of this session, there is, um, there's not very much to take out and I want to just move on from the Atlanteans and the Egyptians and the South America, which we covered already in the past session. Uh, I'll make the conclusions that, how about it? So think about the, um, the narrative that we have in, in this history of humans and all our different gods that we have and all from even India and other places that they have seen these beings, of course, many of, of those say in the eastern part of our world have gotten the information in a way that they can um, they can coexist with each other and they have created phenomenal philosophies like the Tao and uh, Buddhism or even Zen Buddhism for that matter it, it does create and there is a resemblance with the law of one tremendously in the way they explain the universe and everything else so the Hindu as well so there, there has been some success in all these ways, but there's also the, um, the bad impression that there exists an external God because of these entities that came here and gave us that information. And so we created this uh, idea of not only Armageddon, like we talked about here, but also the idea that there is a, an external savior and we are separated from nature. We're separated from the cosmos itself. We are an experiment, and even though we are, we, uh, we are disconnected from our own true source. And we think we are these um, hopeless animals who have somehow created consciousness and are now at the mercy of some external forces. No matter how you see it, the problem is when we stop disconnecting ourselves from everything else. And I wouldn't call this a problem per se, because people are allowed to be this way and that's all well and good that's all part of the creation one of the beautiful things about the philosophy that i derive from the law of one and from everything else that i relate to is that there is no one right way this is all a construct of our religious beliefs our societal beliefs our political beliefs because we think there is a right and wrong way to live life and so we create cells for ourselves and walls and distance and separation and so on. That to me is very much not so, but we are allowed to live that way because this is a sandbox. This is a playground in which we come here, we have an incarnation, we have programmed ourselves, but we have free will to do whatever we want. However, those who are seeking some sort of harmony in these, uh, hard times, these tribulations that we're going through, may find some solace in knowing that there is no right or wrong. There is just the way of you being, and by you being, you can just see where it takes you, where the river of your own energy takes you. This can be challenging, but as you can see, once you start disassociating from external sources, and I mean even family members, friends, your circles, your groups, that don't resonate with you and you just start being yourself in the way you want to be, Oof, the whole heaven opens to you and you start seeing that there is no external influence, especially from a God. You are the creator of this. And I know this can be hard for a lot of people to digest, but that is the truth. And you only choose to believe it or not. And in both ways, you are correct. So that's all I got in the conclusion for this just because bringing back the notion that we have been conditioned for hundreds, if not a couple of thousand years already, that we need to follow some sort of external authority, which translated into every other authority that we have in this society. <laughs> but we don't have to. I mean, we don't have to. We can choose to, but we don't have to. All right, so that's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much for watching as usual and bearing with my philosophical speculations and views of the universe and this world itself, especially of the human nature, which is really what I'm after with these philosophies in the physical and metaphysical reality. In the next video, we're going to cover the rest of session 24 and we're gonna end up nicely with the 1950s contact and the beginning of the impression of information through channeling by the Confederation as we now know it after a long time of no contact. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Every link is in the description box. 
And I thank you so much for watching as usual. I'll see you in the next video.